Thank you very much, Gary and Petra, for organizing this fantastic platform. Now, the title is Overcoming Apartheid. And I want to start with disclaimers, two of them. One, the problem in South Africa was not apartheid. And mischaracterizing it as an apartheid problem has led to the poor outcomes that we are seeing. That once apartheid was taken out of the law books, people said, well, apartheid is dead, long live apartheid. And, and so that's the problem. And the, the, the actual problem we have to contend with, which we are continuing to do so, is how to restore the backbone, the self-confidence, the reverence for indigenous culture, knowledge, and the pride of African people in who they are. And this breaking of the backbone took away the God in us. Someone talked about the divinity in us and in all life forms. African people didn't need to be Christianized. They knew there was a God and the God was everywhere. But they were told that they were Kephas, they were heathens and so on. So we have to deal with the problem at source. The second uh, disclaimer is that the end of apartheid in 1994 was not a miracle. It was a result of hard, painful work of mobilizing multi-stakeholders, multi-sectoral people, but led by young people. And the young people were able to lead in the 70s while the elders were on, in prison and outside because the young people got to understand that unless you liberate the mind of oppressed people, they'll remain in chains for life. And so we were able, I was part of that generation that were able to stand up and say, I'm not a non-white and non-European, I'm black and I'm proud and I'm an African from a very rich tradition. And this is the trigger that then led to the end game of the racist system in South Africa as we knew it in terms of the, the, um, the laws of the country. So June 16 didn't happen as a miracle. And what happened after that, up to the 80s was simple mobilization. The interesting point about it is that a lot of people talk about Mandela liberating South Africa. We liberated Mandela. What Mandela did is the second stage. Mandela's contribution is negotiating the political settlement, building those bridges that someone was talking about between a huge chasm and being able to manage the frustration of those who were dispossessed and the fears of those who are about to lose power. And that's his genius, that he was able to lead us through that. And of course, the political settlement was real. It had the best constitution from learning from all of you. We had the TRC process to give amnesty to those who had done horrible things, but the unfinished agenda. And this is what is the problem. When you look at my country, you see huge promise problems. Why? First, in the preamble of our constitution, we understood that we needed an emotional settlement to strengthen and secure the political settlement. And that means acknowledging that we have been wounded and being humiliated, and that white people also are wounded by thinking that they are superior. For us to live together, we have to, to build those bridges. We also don't have shared values in South Africa. We, the sh values of our beautiful constitution, human rights, Ubuntu and so are not shared necessarily. And finally, because we have not succeeded in restoring that respect and human dignity, we continue to see some of the horrible inequalities, gender-based violence, youth, uh, um, we have actually shortchanged our youth. So, the third element is a socioeconomic settlement. We are the most unequal society in the world, again, because we dealt with the legal part of our parties. We didn't deal with the fundamental social engineering that guarantees that even today, 26 years after apartheid, black people are still the majority poor and uneducated and so on. Now, so what is needed now is again this multi 
level multi-stakeholder intervention. The state has a huge role to play, but its capacity is limited by having wounded people in there, which is why you have corruption and state capture. Second, business also is limited. It's got a lot of power, but it still has an extractive mentality rather than the shared prosperity mentality. Civil society is also limited because after 300 years or 500 years of uh, oppression, we haven't got a civic culture. We have activism, but we don't have that responsibility and rights going together. And so the fourth and final point, we now are in a remobilization phase where the vision is clear that we need to emerge from the emergency of the dispossession, but also the emergencies that are now upon us, whether it's viruses or, or the climate. And so young people, again, are leading this. They are leading this by calling for a just transition to a well-being economic system where there is prosperity shared by all and where there are shared values and everyone comes to the party, not just to take, but to share and to give. And this is a long, long journey we are on. Uphill, but I tell you what, you can feel the energy in the country. You were here, you saw it. Thank you.